In this video, we're going to be going over the product distribution for radical chlorination of pentane. So here's pentane, right? It's a five carbon alkane. Alternatively, it can be written like CH3, CH2, 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 and CH3. And we'll label this carbon here C1, this one C2, C3, C4, and C5. In, in this representation, this is C1, this is C2, this is C3, this is C4, and this is C5. So remember, any of these hydrogens can be extracted to give you a, uh, a pentyl radical, which in turn will react with diatomic chlorine to furnish the chloropentane, right? So what are the, what are the different products we can get? Well, we can have chlorination at this, at this carbon, C1, and we would get we would get this product one chloropentane that would be the same as having chlorination at C5 right so this is this is one of our products one chloropentane I think I should capitalize this Alternatively, we could get chlorination at C2, but that would be the same as getting chlorination at C4, right? So chlorination at C2 would give you a 2-chloropentane. Then you could have chlorination at C3. And that will give you a 3 chloropentane. Remember, once again, that chlorination at C1 is the same as at C5. That's why there's no 5 chloropentane, because that'd be the same as 1 chloropentane. And similarly, chlorinate, chloronation at C2 is the same as chlorination at C4. That's why there. I don't list 4 chloropentane as a product because that'd be the same as 2 chloropentane. So these are the three possible monochlorination products. So that's if radical chlorination happens once. It could happen more than once, but we're just looking at if it happens once. You get these three products, but what is the distribution of products? Well, to answer that question, you have to look both at the relative reactivities of, of the hydrogens at each of these carbons in tandem with how many hydrogens are there that, when ab abstracted, could produce each of these products. So both, both of the factors. So uh, two to determine... product distribution must consider two factors one is the number of hydrogens I'm just gonna abbreviate that as H apostrophe S the number of hydrogens that'll the number of hydrogens that can be abstracted to yield a the number of hydrogens at any given carbon atom or I, I shouldn't say that the number of equivalent hydrogens that could that when abstracted would give a particular product so the number of equivalent 
hydrogens whose abstraction will yield a particular product. And the second factor is the relative reactivities of those hydrogens. So REL just means relative and REACT is an abbreviation for reactivity or is the abbreviation I'm using for reactivity. So we're, we're going to have to take into account those two factors. And I'll actually I'll go over the calculation and then explain why why we uh, calculate the product distribution in the way that we do. So let's look let's look at the one chloropentane. How many different hydrogens could be abstracted to give this particular product? Well, you could abstract any of the three hydrogens at C1, carbon one, or any of the three hydrogens at carbon five. So that's six hydrogens, six possible hydrogens. And these are primary hydrogens, right? So they have a relative reactivity of one. Remember that the relative reactivity to chlorination, I'll just say to Cl, secondary hydrogens to the relative reactivity, the ratio of relative reactivity of secondary to primary hydrogens to chlorination is 4 to 1, or approximately 4 to 1. So any given secondary hydrogen is four times more likely to be abstracted than any given primary hydrogen. This has to do with the stability of the secondary radical over the primary radical, and that's due to hyperconjugation. And I've covered this in another video, so in case you missed it, just feel free to watch the hyperconjugation video. All right, so here the relative reactivity of the primary hydrogens is one. Now let's look at uh, three chloropentane. This results in chlorination at carbon three. There are two possible hydrogens at carbon three that could be abstracted. And these are secondary hydrogens, so their relative reactivity is 4. Oops, I should have written relative reactivity equals 1 for, for the 1 chloropropane example. But here we're dealing with a secondary, we're dealing with secondary hydrogens that are being abstracted to give this secondary chlorination product. So the relative reactivity is 4. Four. It's approximately four. I'm just going to say equal to, for simplicity's sake. And for to get two chloropentane, there are two hydrogens that could be abstracted at C2, or alternatively, two could be abstracted at C4. So there are four possible hydrogens. And these are secondary hydrogens, so their relative reactivity is 4. And so what, what we end up doing to find the actual like percentages of each product, that would be the product distribution, is for each, for each uh, possible product, we multiply the number of possible hydrogens that could be abstracted by the relative reactivity. And that should make sense because 
the product distribution is both a function of the number of equivalent hydrogens whose abstraction will yield that product and the relative reactivity of those hydrogens. So by multiplying, we do take into account both of those factors, and you'll see you'll see why we multiply after after I go through the calculation. So six times one, there's six possible hydrogens that could be abstracted at either C1 or C5 to give this product, so, and, and they're primary, so we have a relative reactivity of one. Six times one is six. For this, for this three chloropentane product, there are two possible hydrogens that could be abstracted. And the relative reactivity of each of those is four. So we have two times four to give eight. So that'll be the two hydrogens at carbon three. Now for two chloropropane, or I two chloropentane I should say we have four possible hydrogens two at C2 and two at C4 and each of those are secondary so relative reactivity is four we have four times four is sixteen so what we end up doing we have to do is we add six to eight to sixteen we get the total is 14 plus 16 is 30. And then we look here and we say this is 6. We divide. We divide by the total. 6 divided by 30 is 1 fifth. And that, that's equal to, I should say, equal to 20%. So 20% of the product is uh, this 1 chloropentane. And then here we have 8 divided by 30, and that's approximately, it's approximately 26.7%. And here we have 16 divided by 30 for 2 chloropentane. And that's approximately 53.2%. 3% or maybe that maybe I went off the page here I'll just rewrite it 16 divided by 30 is approximately 53.3% okay so let me I'll, I'll rewrite everything here so we we found here are the three products one chloropentane 2 chloropentane and 3 chloropentane. We multiplied the number of hydrogens whose abstraction, number of possible equivalent hydrogens whose abstraction would give that product by the relative reactivity of each hydrogen. So here we have 6 times 1 is 6. Here we have 4 possible hydrogens and they're secondary, so 4 times 4 is 16. Here we have two possible hydrogens that will lead, whose abstraction will lead to this product. So they're secondary, so we have four times two is eight. We added eight, 16, and six to give us 30. And we, we divided each of these products by 30. So we have, and we converted them to percentages. So we have a 20% uh, here, 53.3% here, and 26.7% here. And so this is the product distribution, and and to to see why why we did this particular calculation, why we why we add up to thirty, added every added all these numbers up, and then divided by that number. Let's pay attention here for a second. So I'm going to switch this around two times. I'm going to say this is two times four, which is eight. Here, and eight over thirty is. And, and you'll see why here. So this, this first number is the number of hydrogens. And the second is the relative reactivity. So here we're dealing with secondary hydrogens. In the cases of 2-chloropentane and 3-chloropentane, 
we have secondary hydrogens that would be abstracted. And they are four times more likely to be abstracted than a primary, or four times as likely to be abstracted as a primary hydrogen is. But there are, in this case, for 2-chloropentane, there are four possible hydrogens whose secondary hydrogens that could be abstracted. Right, and uh, in 3-chloropentane, there are only two possible hydrogens that could be abstracted to give this product. So it should make sense that the 2-chloropentane product is twice as likely as the 3-chloropentane product because they both contain secondary hydrogens which are equally likely to be abstracted as as one another but the 2 chloropentane product uh, there are there are four possible hydrogens whose abstraction will give the 2 chloropentane product whereas only two whose abstraction will give the 3 chloropentane product so we'd expect to see about double as much 2 chloropentane as we would 3 chloropentane what about 1-chloropentane? Well, a primary hydrogen is only about a quarter as likely to be abstracted as a secondary hydrogen, right? So we have this second number indicating the, reflecting the relative reactivity is 1 versus 4 in the secondary case. But there are six primary hydrogens that could be abstracted, whereas there are only four secondary leading to this 2-chloropentane product in this case and there are only four, two secondary leading to this 3-chloropentane product in this case. So given that a uh, secondary hydrogen is about four times more likely or, or a primary is six to four times less likely as a secondary to be abstracted and uh, there are there's about one and a half times as many possible primary hydrogens that could be abstracted to give you this product as there are secondary that could give you this product you'd expect that you'd expect this ratio to be about 6 over 16 right and this so uh, if you think about if you uh, think about uh, if you think about all all possible products as sitting in a box here, right? You have you have the one chloro one chloropentane product. I'm just gonna dry write it like that. You have the 2-chloropentane product here and then you have the 3-chloropentane product here it would make sense that you would have to to find a percentage you you, you would have to add up some index of, of their relative abundance to, to get this to get some semblance of the total and then divide by that total to give you a a, a percentage well you you'd uh, take that you take that ratio and then multiply by 100% to give you the percentage and that's basically why why we calculate the product distribution in the way that we do we'll work some more examples and hopefully it'll become a little bit clearer.